So it would be really nice if there was an equation that we could write down to describe a wave travelling along a piece of string or in fact any travelling wave. It turns out that there is such an equation and it has a sinusoidal form. So I'll be showing you this equation very shortly but let's first of all just discuss why the form is sinusoidal. So there's a couple of good reasons for this. One reason is that these waves are often generated by objects which are undergoing simple harmonic motion. Objects undergoing sin simple harmonic motion naturally create waves with a sinusoidal waveform. Another good reason to choose a sinusoidal waveform is in fact with Fourier transforms we can add sinusoidal waves together to get any shaped waveform that we want. So that's a bit beyond the scope of what we're doing here but it, it is possible so it's another nice reason to choose this sinusoidal travelling wave equation. Okay so the sinusoidal travelling wave equation can be written y of xt is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. Now, in this equation, y represents the height of the wave at the position x and time t. So y is in meters. x, that's the distance along your piece of string or along the x-axis, and that is also in meters. t is the time in seconds. a in front of the sine function stands for the amplitude, and it is measured in meters. K is known as the wave number and it can be calculated from the wavelength using the equation K is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So the units for K are radians per meter. Omega is the angular frequency and it is equal to 2 pi f where f is the frequency which is measured in hertz or inverse seconds so omega is measured in radians per second phi is the phase constant. So this is just there so that we can match any starting conditions that we are given. Now this equation that we've written down represents a wave travelling in the positive direction, so to the right. If we wanted to change the direction of the wave so that it was going in the negative direction to the left, we'd write y of xt is equal to a sine kx plus omega t plus phi. So the wave is actually travelling in the negative direction if kx and omega t have the same sign. If they have opposite signs then it's travelling in the positive direction. Now another thing that we can get from this equation is the speed of the wave. We know that v is equal to f lambda is the speed but by looking at our relationships for k and omega you can see that f lambda is equal to omega over 2 pi times 2 pi on k which is equal to omega on k. So the speed of the wave is actually given by omega on k. So you can work that out if you're given a wave equation because omega is the number in front of the t and k is the number in front of the x. So let's have a look at how we can solve a problem with this now. So the question is, the equation for a wave is given by y of x and t is equal to 2 sine 3x minus 4t plus pi on 2 meters, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. Find the a amplitude, b frequency, c wavelength, d speed and e initial height at x is equal to 1.0 meter. Okay so in order to do this what we'll want to do is equate this equation to our equation for a wave y of xt is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. Okay so we can see because it's got the negative sign here that it's a wave traveling in the positive x direction. Now the amplitude that's given by this letter capital A here and that is the number out the front. So the amplitude is equal to 2 meters. Now to find the frequency we're going to need to look at omega. Omega is in front of the t so we know that omega is equal to 4.0 and omega is also equal to 2 pi f. So this tells us that the frequency is equal to 4 over 2 pi and so we can solve that and we get 0 0.64 hertz 
that's the answer to B, is the, the frequency. So 0 0.64 hertz. Now the wavelength, C. We know that K, the wave number, is given by 2 pi over lambda, and this is equal to 3. So this tells us that lambda is equal to 2 pi on 3. So we could just give this as 2 thirds pi, or we could solve it on the calculator, in which case we get this is equal to 2.1 meters. So the wavelength is 2.1 meters. The speed, uh, d, we've got v is equal to f lambda. So we could just multiply together our f and our lambda here, or we could use the other equation that v is equal to omega on k, and we know that omega is 4 and k is 3. So this is 4 over 3. And so that is equal to 1.3 meters per second. So this is 1.3 meters per second. And then in part E, we're asked to find the initial height at x is equal to 1.0 meters. So initial tells us that t is equal to 0. So what we're trying to find is the height when x is equal to 1 and t is equal to 0. So we need to substitute 1 and 0 into this equation. So this is going to be 2 sine. Um, now we'll have 3 times 1 minus, well, 4 times 0, that's 0 plus pi on 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 times sine. Solving this, we end up with 4.57. And we solve this on the calculator. Now it's really important to remember when you put this into your calculator that your calculator needs to be in radians mode because all these terms in here are given in radians. So if we have our calculator in radians mode, then we find that this sine function here is actually equal to minus 1. So we end up with an amplitude of minus 2 meters. So that will be the lowest point on this wave.